yeah, I got the game all in my hand. Ooh, and yeah. What's going on, Laker fans? Welcome to Laker Land. I am Christian, Mr. All of the Above himself, and we are here to discuss the Laker trade that just went down. Now, it isn't the um, Kyrie Irving trade we might have hoped for. You know, Kevin Durant did a whole bunch of running around, causing hoopla around in the NBA. But uh, it seems like that's officially over. He made his decision to go back to Brooklyn. I don't know, man. It's a whole long story for a different day. Maybe I talk about it when my man Matt is here. But man, it twiz what it twiz. Twas what it twas. Let's talk about what just went down, and that is THT, Stanley Johnson. Unfortunately, they are no longer Lakers. And Patrick Beverly, Patrick Beverly, welcome to the Lake Show. Let's talk about it, man. Let's let's start off by first saying, I will miss THT. I will miss Stanley Johnson for THT. Um, young Bull. I was really high on the prospect of THT once upon a time. I am still high on that now. I believe with him, it's gonna be a, another situation like it is with a lot of the kids with the Lakers. He's only 21, man. He just is able to drink. And uh, it's gonna be a situation where ho hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm rooting for you, my man. Uh, he's going to flourish in Utah or flourish wherever he may go. And they're going to be like, oh, Lakers should have kept him. What another young asset they gave up for a 35-year-old. Uh, we know how the game goes. Come on, man. We've seen it with Brandon Ingram. We've seen it with Lonzo. We've seen it with Larry Nance. We've seen it with Jordan Clarkson. We've seen it with Julius Randle. May I continue? I'm not going to. It does hurt. Ultimately, it doesn't fit right now. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Stanley Johnson. That name did hurt to see um, come across that tweet notification by Woj. I, I, I was a fan of Stan. I thought he showed us a lot of heart and a lot of just desire to be a, I want to say a role player, but, but a player in his role. Stanley Johnson was one of the only bright spots of last season. And I was really looking forward to, you know, a full off season and him knowing what his role might actually be going into a season. What it can bring, I guess we'll never find out. And it's really unfortunate because I was, I was just retweeting a bunch of Stanley, uh, good Stanley propaganda on my timeline. And it, like I said, it is what it is. I, I, I wish it could have been Wenyan Gabriel, but you know, ultimately Jazz has to agree to something too. And uh, they might like the idea of Stanley Johnson. With that being said, Patrick Beverly is now a Los Angeles Laker. Now, if you are like me, you have hated Patrick Beverly for some time now. I remember when Lonzo's uh, first NBA game happened and he ran into Patrick Beverly. Or, or Was that the first game? I want to say first game. He, he ran into Patrick Beverly and it was the most annoying thing ever. And that from there on out started my Patrick Beverly hatred. And then it progressed. You know, he obviously became Clipper heavy and was the heart of the Clippers for some time, which ultimately, if you're the heart of that team, I want the heart to stop. It is what it is. He gave LeBron, you know, trouble on Christmas Day, ruining my whole holiday. I'll never forget that. Um, but now he's on our team. And he's one of those players that, you know, it's generic, it's cliche to say, you love to play with, you hate to play against. Well, guess what, guys? We get to play with him now. And you can look at this trade in a levy of ways. First way you can look at it is we just traded two young athletes on the Los Angeles Lakers for a 35-year-old point guard. That's a fair way to look at it. You can also look at it from the standpoint of Russell Westbrook, Patrick Beverly, that doesn't really make sense. They, they, you under the assumption they hate each other. We, we've heard Patrick Beverly say that Russell Westbrook has a uh, really changed Patrick's perception around the league because of his comments. You know, he just runs a runs around. He doesn't do much. Um, so again, you're like, okay, that doesn't really make sense. Or you can look at it in a different way, and this is the way that I'm looking at it, and I believe you should be looking at it as well. As there's more to come. This is not done by any means. I don't think in a world where we keep Russell Westbrook, we do this trade. I think this certainly means Russell Westbrook is on the move. I think the fact that we didn't give up any picks is a clear indicator on that as well, which is why maybe we had a throw in a Stanley Johnson or maybe why we had a throw in a THT. 
is because we didn't want to trade using picks. We wanted to keep those assets around for when we dump Russell Westbrook. So looking at it like that, this is exciting. I'm excited for Patrick Beverly. He's actually somebody that I wanted on my team a few years in a row now because let's be real, he's gonna give you heart, he's gonna give you defense, he's a decent three-point shooter, a 38% career three-point shooter. He's somebody where unlike last year, he's always going to give you his all. And man, do we need that? Do we need somebody who's gonna give us that energy and defense? Defense, finally. He's gonna do all the clapping in your face, annoying pests like a like a fly that you just wanna keep on swatting but you can't quite hit because you might get suspended, fined, or you know, kicked out the league. And, and, and listen, man, um, I think we need that. I think we need that this year. Also, you look at all of our signings, it was a bunch of young, you know, um, I'm not gonna say unproven stars, or not, not even stars is the word, but unproven um, signings. This is somebody who has a actual locker room presence, a veteran, somebody who seems to, for whatever reason, not miss the playoffs. And boy, can I use some good juju this year on the team. Um, also, a guy that actually believes that he can help us go to the playoffs. If I was a free agent and I played for the Lakers, I'm going to the playoffs, I'm going to the West Conference Finals. He said that in... Uh, his offseason, which is weird. He was under contract for other teams, and he was saying, yeah, I could take the Lakers to the playoffs. Like, not your jurisdiction, but you know he wanted to be a Laker down inside. I, there's rumors that he's already eager to join. Um, and honestly, man, I'm eager to have him. I can't wait to see what it may um, lead into. I can't wait to see how he might fuel some of our other superstars like LeBron James, like Anthony Davis. I honestly, I'm interested in seeing him alongside Austin Reeves. I think that combination might be exciting for me. And honestly, I think he could, he, he could help out Austin Reeves' development just a bit, man, as far as just being a past and, you know, he's a guy that has grinded through his whole NBA career. And Austin Reeves being an undrafted uh, free agent that made a name for himself last year can learn even more from Patrick Beverly about that. So um, I'm excited, man. I really am. And not only that, this has to be a clear cut sign that more things are coming. This is like the first sign of hope that we have in a very long time. I, I really can't see Westbrook staying on this team anymore. I think there's a few different options and routes to explore as far as trading Westbrook now. And I think about the one or two picks thing at this point, please, man, I'm over that. Trade the two picks. LeBron signed the extension. We don't got to worry about that portion. Our salary cap is, for the most part, freed up next year. We don't have to worry about that. We can figure it out. Sign somebody. We got things that we can do. F those picks, man. I don't give a damn. I really don't. And, you know, I'm a Laker fan. So, regardless, when I see a pick, I'm like, those should be... 25 and under as far as a pick goes. It's 25, 26, 27. I, I'm looking at championships. I'm not looking at being lottery. You know, it's, it's not like we're going to be, I hope not. It's not like we're going to be missing out on, you know, the, the number one pick of the draft. Not on my radar whatsoever. And uh, also, I believe in our scouting department regardless. I believe in our scouting department if we got a first round pick, a second round pick, undrafted pick, um, well, undrafted free agents. It really doesn't matter to me because we just had THT who was a second round pick that we just flipped for a win now asset. So in the future, we can do that again. We'll be okay. Um, now, as far as some of the options, the routes that I might be looking to take moving from here on out, man, that indie one is right in my face and I'm just... I really want Indy. I, I, I really am looking at hopefully trading Russell Westbrook for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Obviously, the picks would be involved. Um, I say if that deal is on the table in any form of capacity, Russ and two picks for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Rob, pick up the phone, speed dial their ass, and let's get it done. I, I think that's probably our best possibility right now because I, I envision a starting lineup in that case with... Pat Bev, Buddy Heald, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Miles Turner. And in my opinion, that's a damn good starting lineup. I'm not going to count my eggs before they hatch, and I'm not going to get too excited just yet. 
but I got some hot takes I can make with a team that is assembled with those people as well as, you know, all the signings that we had. And um, unfortunately, trading Stanley Johnson, even trading THT, we lose some wing depth. And um, that's, a, that's a question in itself. You know what I mean? We, we've, we've had that season last year where we had way too many guards. And if you look at the roster now, we got Kendrick Nine, Austin Reeves, Patrick Beverly, Russell Westbrook. And then you look at our wings and you're like, um, and I can include Lonnie Walker, Troy Brown in there. But they're kind of like, they're all in the middle. They, they, can, they can flex and play a few different positions. And then you look at our wings and we feel a little light. And it, and it seems like Juan Toscano Anderson, William Gabriel, who I'm not the biggest fan of, and uh, LeBron James, who obviously is LeBron James. Um, so I, I, I get the hesitancy in all of that. But again, this roster still is not complete. And still, um, we signed people in the offseason for a reason. Troy Brown Jr. can play up. Lonnie Walker can play the 2-3, to my knowledge. Um, and ultimately, you know, you get Buddy Heal, the bigger shooting guard, maybe can play some three. Um, AD sliding down to the four, most likely a lot for this season. So we're viewing him more like a four than a center, I would imagine. You know, we got Bryant, we got Jones. Um, so I, I feel like we're a little more filled than what it may appear. And man, I am ready to see what this final roster will be looking like going into training camp and also... I'm just going to put this out there. Cole Swider, I want you to get a roster spot. I hope you shine during the little mini camp that LeBron has in, uh, is it Vegas? No, nah, he switched the location this year. I forgot where he did it, but it'll be somewhere. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm excited. And I'm excited that like the ball is actually rolling on moves because I'm not going to say I was scared. I never one point thought that like we were going to have this concrete roster that we just you know keep Russell Westbrook and all the free agent signings and that's all. Because, you know, front office was telling us otherwise. And realistically, if you took a look at it on paper, it just never made sense. And um, I believe Rob is going to start making it make a little more sense. So um, I'm hopeful. I am holding some judgment out for how the final roster looks. So I'm, I'm not quite there yet. But with the addition of Patrick Beverly, man, I am super excited for, again, a guy that has willed, I'm not going to say he's been the reason that his teams have gone to the playoffs every year, but he has been one of the instrumental parts of that. I truly believe that the Minnesota Timberwolves don't have that celebration that they did after winning a play-in game without Patrick Beverly. I don't I don't think they, they make the playoffs as, as they did. I think he installed or helped instill a culture in that locker room that just wasn't there before. And uh, I'm excited. I, I really am. I, I can't wait to, to, to see his first game, to see his first technical, to get in Steph Curry's face, to get in Damian Lillard's face, you know, superstars that I love, but to just annoy them. Not even if it's effective as far as defending them, but just to pest them because we need dogs. Last year was a team full of puppies. We need dogs. And Patrick Beverly, for one thing more than another, is a dog. My biggest concern with it, in all honesty, is the age. And it does seem like as soon as somebody hits a Laker jersey, father time kicks in. That they'll be perfect and they'll be youthful for their whole career. And then they put on the Laker jersey and all of a sudden, Steve Nash can't carry groceries without straining his back. True fact. Um, so... Slight concern, you know, because we obviously traded some younger players for a 35-year-old. But, man, at the end of the day, if you want to win now, you have to have pieces that can win now. And although THT definitely would have been, you know, a nice project to keep working on and maybe very, very, very useful and uh, important for the future, we don't have time to wait. LeBron James is in year 20, and we really don't have time to wait. And also, man, let me just say... Losing THT stings a little bit, but at the time when he was um, our shiny new toy, let's say, we didn't have anything else. We were a team full of veterans. We had, you know, the whole roster filled with real OGs. Now we got a few, um, few nice pieces as far as the future goes. With Austin Reeves, with Lonnie Walker, with Troy Brown Jr., Thomas Bryant is really young. It doesn't feel as dependent that we need a player like THT, especially because 
I don't know what his role would have been on the team. And it, 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 honestly, it does hurt because I feel like THT suffered, as we all did, playing with Russell Westbrook last year. Um, and it did hurt his game all around and ultimately hurt his stock. We could have probably traded THT at a higher value at one point in time. And ultimately, because of last year, the perception around him got slighted a little bit. And um, it, 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 that one does sting a little bit because I really was high at THT at one point in time. And I'm still high on the kid right now. Once again, he's 21 years old. But um, we got to move on. We got to move on and realize that if you can't help us win a championship right now, then ultimately we have to do the best business decision. And I believe that Patrick Beverly on the Los Angeles Lakers is a good business decision. Now, more moves need to be made. More things have to go on. More things have to happen. Again, it, it, without the Heald and Turner trade, I don't know what are the ones I'm really looking at too enticing. I was interested in Bogdanovich a little bit. Um, but besides that, like with the Charlotte trade kind of, or the Charlotte idea falling through a little bit because Miles Bridges deserves hell. Um, I, I, I don't know where else we can flip Westbrook to. And if you guys have any ideas, please let me know down below in the comment section. But I'm running dry on ideas. So I really just hope that the Pacers are still on the phone. They're still interested in uh, dishing off Heald and Turner. Seems like for whatever reason, nobody else wants them, which scares me just a little bit, but I'll talk about that if we actually get them. Um, I'm excited, man. I, I'm starting to feel like uh, things are happening again. And for a while, it was just everybody sitting on their hands waiting for the Kevin Durant domino to fall. And I, I guess it fell or it just... KD, what you're just... I'm not going to say anything. He might come at me on Twitter. Um, yeah, so with that being said, guys, what do you think of the move? Are you excited? Are you disappointed? Be real. You could be disappointed, and, and, I, and I get that. But uh, I think we got to look at it with a few lenses and also know that um, the painting isn't quite finished yet. We still got a few more colors to, uh, to paint in. So, um, guys, Patrick Beverly is officially a Laker. THT Stanley Johnson is officially not. What do you guys think? Let me know down below, please, and thank you. And man, I'm waiting for the next move. I, 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 trust me, I got the notifications on like everybody else. And uh, I got that notification from Woj as I was mid-conversation with my girl. I was talking about my day and I said, hold up. And then I, I gave a whole 20 minute YouTube video to my girl. She has no interest whatsoever, but boy, did she listen. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking to you guys the next trade we get. That is a fact, that is a promise. I just hope it happens at this point. So guys, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. But if I don't see you, have a good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Yeah. Yeah, I got the game all in my hand, ooh, and yeah Pop out with the drip and make a fan drool You could risk it if you want, this ain't no fan duel Yeah, I'm in a band's cool Yeah, stabbing for the breeze